So this is another example of a routing sheet. And this, uh, this is having a different format, but uh, major contents are the same. So you could see the word center, uh, the operation that is to be performed at that word center, the sequence, process instructions, setup time, run time. And of course, as we discussed in the previous segment that uh, we can have other details as well. As a production planner at the Superior Pump Company, you have been asked to provide an estimated number of days it would take to produce 30 units of some pump 1501-001. After reviewing the routing header record, you have found that a pump must be uh, produced in large sizes of 10 units. Large sizes 10 units. Inter operation time, Q, weight, and move are not part of the calculation. The plan works one eight hour shift per day. Calculate the time it takes to produce the 30 units through each operation. Run time given is for a batch of 10 pumps. Calculate how many working days it will take to make the 30 units. Or in other words, the minimum time actually that is required uh, to make 30 pumps. So the calculations are very similar as we saw in the previous example. The only difference is that here the time is given for, uh, for a large size of 10 units. So this run time is for, for 10 units. So for first operation, the time will be simply two plus, two plus what? Three. So this time given is uh, for, for a large size of 10 units. And we have to make 30. So we will be having two plus three into 3.5. So this 3.5 will be multiplied by three. Now we have to make three lots. And time to make one lot is given in the routing sheet. So that will be equal to 12.5. Similarly, the time for the second operation will be change over time plus three into 4.5. So that will be equal to uh, 2.5 plus three into 4.5. So again, this time 4.5 is to make 10 pumps and we have to make 30. So that will be equal to 16. Similarly, for the third operation, it will be 2.5. Uh, plus three into four, so that will be twelve point. Uh, that will be fourteen point five. Twelve plus uh, two point five. Similarly, for painting, it will be one plus uh, three into two, so that will be seven. And there is no setup in the case of last uh, operation. So the run time for ten pumps is two. So two into three will be six. So by adding these, that will be equal to uh, 28, 42, 43, 50, 56. Uh, now that is 56 hours. And we are having eight hours a day. So that will be approximately equal to seven days. So I hope it is clear. Another important uh, element in job shop scheduling, and that is actually very important in project management is uh, Gantt chart. Gantt charts are used for a variety of purposes related to loading and scheduling. And they can be used to show the schedule as well as progress, uh, progress against a schedule. So it has different formats, but you will always, have time on the horizontal scale, generally mentioned at the bottom, but in some cases you might find at the time buckets at the top. And then you show the activities in, in the form of horizontal lines or bars. So for example, the activity A will take four weeks in this case, activity B will take around 
uh, more than uh, six weeks. So that is around seven weeks. And similarly, you can see for other activities as well. So you could see the start time of each of the activities as well as the ending time. So again, this is the plan. So this is something that we are planning that this is the time when activity C will start and this is the time when it will end. Same is true for other activities. So it is showing the starting time, ending time, as well as the expected time that each activity will take. So this is a very useful tool to graphically show any plan, whether it is related to production or project or any other plan that you're making. So you can relate the activities or the milestones or the operations with time. And you could also show the relationship of each activity. For example, you could easily see here that activity D will start uh, once you are done with the activity. Similarly, E will start after the activity D has ended. And you could see that uh, some activities can be performed in parallel. So for example, at least partially F can be performed in parallel to D. So not only the time required for each activity, as well as the starting and ending time and the total time for each activity, but also the relationship, whether there is a, a sequential relationship that is when an activity will end, only then you can start as another activity or you can perform, for example, two activities in parallel that is also shown. So this is a very important, very useful tool and you can draw it in different softwares, including Excel or some project management software. So again, it has different formats. So basically this looks just like drawing something on a graph paper. So you could see the grid as well. So apart from showing the plan, it also can help you to show the progress against a plan or schedule. So this is one of the formats actually to show the uh, progress of a schedule. So you could see that you should be somewhere over here uh, for this activity, but you are, you are behind schedule for, uh, so this job 332B is behind schedule. This job is ahead of schedule. You should be somewhere over here, but we have done something extra. And this job, 12A is on schedule. A better format than the one shown here is to show two, two bars. And for example, one bar is showing the plan and the other is showing the progress against the plan behind that. And you could use different shades or different colors uh, to show that, for example, say green color is showing the plan. So green bar will show the plan for say job 32B and a line or a bar in a different color, say the blue color or a different shade will show the progress. So it, it, it is better actually to visually understand uh, to, to draw two bars, one for plan and other for progress against the plan, but you could find different formats. But the basic point here is that the Gantt chart is a vital tool whenever you are making a plan for, for a job shop or for a project for, or for any other purpose. So these were some basics related to uh, job shop. Uh, some terminology was discussed. So if you have any question, you can ask.